Uh, hello everyone. I'm going to show you how to make this today. So yeah, first things first, let's hide all these layers. Just, you know, I, you're probably figuring out just a ton right now of just how I, the creation process goes just by me hiding all these layers. So, but it, there's some important steps uh, how to figure out how to do it. So first things first, you got your render and you got a black background. I'm just using a black background for this because that works the best with um, the type of render I have. So as you could tell. Um, so yeah, um, first thing I did here um, with the render just before anything, uh, I kind of wanted to get the illusion that it's uh, sitting in space. So I blurred this area right here and I blurred that area. Um, yeah, you could do that by taking your elliptical marquee tool, put a feather on it, of course. Um, that way it's not a rush cut off when you end up blurring it. But yeah, just take that. Make sure you're on your render layer. Go to filter, Gaussian blur. And yeah, that gives it a pretty um, uh, straightforward uh, or a pretty uh, blurry effect. So, um, and of course, this is one tool that uh, I'll show you, uh, the fade tool. If you don't like the blur that it did, um, you could go to fade, and it'll fade between the two la uh, the step you just took and the previous step uh, in Photoshop. But anyways, the first thing I usually do is I add atmospheric brushing. Um, I got these two already. Um, this thing right here, this is um, the way I made that is I just took a uh, a brush like this. Make sure the opacity is down to like 13%. You know, just click that, and uh, yeah, that'll kind of give you that thing. And this, this I just kind of brush this whole area like that, and uh, I edited the color by doing a Control U. Um, I was brushing with a white um, brush, so what I did, I edited the whiteness, and then because that will allow you to get like a more you know it'll add tones to it because if you ever try it change the hue on white it's white so you can't have a hue to it if it's pure white so anyways I got that color out of it and I thought that looked pretty cool so um yeah the next thing you do after that or the next thing I did I added brushes brushing to it and yeah, to create these things, I'll just show you really quickly how I did it. Um, uh, you click your brush, your brush option right, oh, right here. Um, go to brush up here. Hit that drop down menu. Hit that one. Go to natural brushes two. You don't need to do that. Um, I'm just going to do that just because. And yeah, then you get always edit the tip shape you want. I'm going to use that one. Shape dynamic scatter texture. Kind of already had these preset, but um, yeah, just always experiment with these. Just you know, it doesn't really matter at this point. Just you know, get something that's looking abstract or whatnot. But um, texture. I usually set it to linear burn. That usually gives it a pretty cool effect and. Um, I got this rock pattern here from, uh, I guess rock patterns that would make the most sense. And yeah, then you got something like this. I got the opacity set to 10%. Um, that's a good starting point, I think, because I usually start out with that. If you hit your bracket option, you could change uh, the size of your brush. Um, the bracket's right by your slash key or something. Maybe your keyboard's different, I don't know, but... Yeah, then just do more of that. Keep increasing the opacity. I'm just going to decrease the size just a little bit. And, yeah, there you go. Now, go to your smudge tool. It'll be in this option. Um, I got it set to 53% right now, but you could do whatever you want with that. It doesn't need to be 53 or anything, but... Yeah, and then just start smudging around. It's always to the outside. I think that gives a pretty cool effect, but... Okay, 
I'm just going to do this. You don't really need to do this if you don't want. Um, but it's just one way I make brushes. Distort wave. Leave it all the, the way it is. Hit OK. Go to fade. Fade wave. Or edit fade. And this is really cool because see the opacity right here? See what it's doing? It's going between those previous two steps. And I'm going to add a blending option to that. So now it's at lighten. Okay. Once you got that, the next step to take, go to Edit, uh, Transform, Perspective. There you go. See that? That's pretty much one good way to add direction when you're making brushes. And see how that brush is following that line? This is the next step to take. This might be my favorite option in Photoshop. Warp. Warp tool. See that right there? It's just kind of warped right around uh, that. Now, you might not be able to tell, but that's the same brush as this one. I just duplicated it. You know, rotate it. And move it, you know, and that's pretty much all. I, you know, once you make a brush, um, one thing I'll do is I'll just duplicate the heck out of it. I'll just keep on duplicating and rotating and changing the size, maybe adding a blurriness to it, which brings us to our next option actually atmospheric brushing. Um, Shoot, as soon as I find it. Okay, these things right here. These are just uh, brushes I made out of fractals with a program called Apophysis. And um, you could tell they're probably they're black right there. This is just one of the cool things that Blending Option does. Um, you set it to screen and the blackness disappears. If you're if you still see you know ever tried doing this effect and you still see like a silhouette or I mean, not a silhouette, or um, if you just see like an outline, edit the, do a control L and edit the levels and just move that thing just a little bit uh, up. Of course, I don't need to do that, but that'll just get, it will make the darks even darker. So, because what screen does, once it's black, um, like completely black, it'll just, you know, block it out. So, yeah. That's how I got that. And then pretty much what I did was I just, you know, place it around right with this brush. And it, you'll see a trend here. Um, I duplicated that and placed it right there. So this is the same brush with just different rotation. But the thing is, you build up your brush in enough and you'll just give the illusion that People won't even be able to tell that you're duplicating and using this thing over and over again. Again, right here, this this brush that I just unhid, that's the same brush as uh, that one, with just a little rotation to it. Now, um, shoot. Now this thing, um, we don't want all our brushes looking the same, so what I did, I made a brush out of an abstract render that uh, another render I did and yeah um, pretty much what I did there um, I just opened the render and I used the same you know transform perspective and warp tools that I did before and you could tell I probably smudged a little bit right here and yeah that's uh once I had something I liked I placed it right there and you know, when you start layering brushes, go through your different blending modes. Because, of course, you don't want something that's looking like that. That looks painfully ugly. Um, but I found when you're dodge, that, you know, that looked pretty decent. So I stuck with it. And one thing when you're dodge also does, um, when it's overlaid so another brush, and the, it'll bring out the whites and kind of give like a kind of like a little energy area just kind of like right there and I kind of like the way that draws the focus in so 
And of course, what I did over here, I did the same thing. I duplicated the, you know, the brush and, you know, just stuck it over there. Added the same blending option to it. And, um, guess what I did again? I duplicated it, increased the size, added a little Gaussian blur to it. And, voila. You know, you could barely even tell that all this was, you know, just a lot of duplication. However, there is one thing right there. Let's, you know, add some variation to that or something there. Because people could probably tell that, um, possibly that, uh, this was the same duplicate because that area was sticking out over there. So, yeah, you know, nothing that a little soft erasing can't take, um, can't help you out with. So, um, and, yeah, going along with the energy thing, I like to add like, these little particles. Those are really easy to make. You could just, it's just one more thing you could go into your basic brushes. Um, uh, just go to Shape Dynamics, or Brush Tips, and do spacing. What spacing does is, it, you know, this whole thing right here, that's all the brush is one stroke, you space them out you'll get it, that effect. Yeah, add a, little, add a little scattering. And see how they're kind of like a oval shaped right over there? Um, one thing you could do there is uh, do the, the minimum roundness and roundness jitter. And yeah, add some rotation to it if you want. Minimum diameter. Yeah, these are just, you know, just experiment with it. It's a lot of fun. Okay, yeah, go back into here. Oh, you know, let's, yeah, always make sure to make a new layer and whatnot, so. These look kind of big right now, but. Just wait till you see what, uh, you know, add a little perspective to it. Yeah, maybe scale them down. And. Yeah, that's more or less, you know, I probably added a warp to it at some point, too, so. Yeah. And, you know, that's just kind of how you get those particles coming out of there. You know, go ahead and steal the techniques. I, I really don't care. You just try yeah, finding your own thing. and um. Yeah, so as you can see, you know, we already have something pretty awesome looking, you know, just by experimentation. Of course, you know, sometimes you just get lucky, too. Um, you know, sometimes you're brushing just, you know, you're having an off day. Sometimes, you know, you gotta work at it a little while. You'll end up getting something you like. Oh, yeah. Usually what I do at the end of the piece, too, I if I don't like the way the colors are looking, just go ahead and go throughout the piece and see, you know, you know, do control U's and you know, increase the saturation. See wait, you know, right there. Just I'm gonna call that bad, but yeah, just constantly edit the color and whatnot. So okay. Well that pretty much concludes it. Hopefully that gave you some idea of um my brushing techniques and you know, what you could do with these type of abstract pieces with just, you know, starting out with a render like that. See? And, yeah. Um, hopefully you have learned a lot from this. And, um, yeah. Have a good one. <laughs>